that quality of yours is uh, what I think I can speak for everybody is what we all kind of admire about you and what we think What's is that? so just the wabi sabi, like the perfectly right. imperfect, like that you're able to right. kind of like you're able to be at a point in your life where you're not so precious about what you're trying to mm. do anymore. And, yeah. may, and maybe okay. a kid has put that in. Maybe like your relationship to Alan has created that for you. Whatever has aligned in your life to allow you to stop giving a shit about pleasing other people mm. and kind of doing something for yourself with integrity and, 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 and doing something that genuinely makes you happy. Um, it's something that I'm trying to do in my life constantly, but am not always great at it. Um, I'm, I'm sure it's something that most people are trying to do in their lives and whether they're good at it or not, it's inspiring and admirable to be in the same house as you, to watch you do oh, that dude, on your two days and thanks. to like that's... see you create this stuff and like also just be like a smiling mother at the same time and to just like have a good attitude about everything and also just to make dope shit. Like I Very see your stuff you. and it's like, dude, this is like, and that's why it's good. It's it's good because you have that attitude yeah, about it. Thanks, dude. Um, yeah, but I say all that as a compliment to you. But I also want to rewind a little bit and mm -hmm. get you guys uh, kind of to uh, walk us through what 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 happened, how this how this all came to be. You two, when you guys were, because you were on tour and you were just out in Australia, kind of being a fizzling out your last piece of your balloon yeah like and, uh, exactly as alan <laughs> as alan would say i was you know coming to the end of my fun life when i met you wasn't i well there's there's three years between us right three or is it two two and a half two, two and, and three quarters yeah there's two and a half years between us we met when taz was me being older 28 uh or 29 i must have been about 29 so i mean i was at the end of my 20s babe, I was you know? I was 26 or 27 so I was Ugh. just like you were at like you were still in puberty you didn't oh, hit dude, I was maturity in... until you were like 31 yeah um well I still haven't hit maturity or puberty yet but uh I was in fifth <laughs> gear when I met Taz Jeez. and uh what was I thinking seriously um yeah what I were think... you thinking I don't fucking know Julian well let's unpack it well, who, what was going on? You saw him on stage. That's no, first time. No, no, no. no, no, no. Not no at give him the story, baby. Not, do you want me to give the story? So we, uh, it was early, early-ish 2013. Alan, let me preface this. I lived in Sydney for a period of time, and during that time, um, I met a friend, Maddie Wu, who was in the music industry. Um, anyway, that aside for a sec. I was living in Melbourne. I had moved back from overseas. I was back at jewellery school, actually. So I was um, finishing my uh, engineering in jewellery course. And I got a call or a text from Maddie to say, hey, I'm, I'm hanging out with this band that are here for the Blues Fest. Uh, we've got a couple of side shows. We're going to be in Melbourne this week. Could you potentially take us out, you know, for dinner? and help you know entertain this band because he wasn't from melbourne i was like yeah i could do that i guess why did they call you to do that what was like just because the... i i guess matt i guess i guess maddie just i was someone that he knew in melbourne and you were just a socialite you were just like a social yeah person i knew that... i you know I, I love melbourne and i've got a lot of friends in the hospitality industry and i think he maybe just thought well if we get together with you you might be able to take us to some good restaurants or hook us up or like just help me with this okay. with the band so I called my um, I called one of my really good friends Jane and just sort of said, "What are you doing on Wednesday? Can you drop your plans?" Uh, and she was like, "Yep." So we met Maddie and Alan and I believe uh, Trevor was there. Uh, another um, person was there too that's no longer with you, but we met. Um, <laughs> She'll remain unnamed. <laughs> um, yeah, and so I met, I remember we met on the corner of, uh, on, on Swanson Street uh, down in Melbourne. I think it was a Wednesday night and we were going to a friend of mine's, uh, she worked at this restaurant. Okay, uh, and hold on, boom, first impression of Alan. He had a lot of necklaces on. <laughs> Puka shells? <laughs> 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 Too many. Oh, like, God. That'll be so, on my gravestone. <laughs> he had like so many necklaces. He had so Why many necklaces so many on necklaces? and there was like, he had this one, like, it was as big as the head of this microphone is. And if you're not watching this and you're only hearing it, I don't know. It was huge. And it, it's like, it was like a dissected 
fossilized pine cone. <laughs> yeah, dude, it was third eye blind cone. Oh, dude. it was. I was like, oh, this and American so- needs some fashion sense i just remember necklaces mm. to be honest wow, that's so funny um and i think you had you had some pretty skinny jeans on and you had some really clunky boots with like a big tongue on them so needless to that. say there was no like an instant love attraction no. that you were feeling no oh come <laughs> on no that's not fair <laughs> well they, i mean I, I i didn't go into i didn't go into this situation sure, expecting right, that i hadn't you know when i'd spoken to maddie and asked who he was um who he was with i had, hadn't heard of alan uh-huh uh, Neither had any of Australia. <laughs> That's not that true. You were there to tour. <laughs> so we went uh, to, there's this building there called Cookie and inside Oof. there, there's a, there's a Thai restaurant. Did you guys go there? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah amazing. So you good. ate at the Thai place? Uh, yeah. Uh, you ate at I Cookie? I don't know. We went to Cookie. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so good. God. You guys remember that dinner? So Oof. good. God, that was good. So one of my best friends, Louise, was working there and um, she hooked us up, you know, we just had a really awesome meal and it, you know, we just sat around chatting and. After that, we went to a whiskey bar. There was a really cool whiskey bar around the corner. There's like 400 whiskeys in this joint. And we got there. By this stage, we'd collected another friend of mine, Tammy, and we're just cruising around town. And we went to this whiskey bar and we'd sort of all paired off at this stage. So I had like paired off with Alan and we were chatting and Jane had paired off with Trevor and then my friend Tammy had paired off with someone else. And so it was kind of like we were all just sitting in these like twosomes just having a chat and uh uh yeah alan and i just we hit it off alan was seeing someone at the time alan was in a serious non-serious relationship i don't know but he was in a relationship and um i was seeing someone at the time too just casually and so initially it wasn't i mean we just got along didn't we babe we like we had some really great chats and we were just getting along like a house on fire and were you like sad oh for sure even though you had a girlfriend yeah i mean like i'm i'm uh at least in this specific instance of that relationship that i was in i was monogamous Uh um and was abiding by the the rules and the laws of monogamy and so yes she was stunner stunner babe time but it was very much uh, platonic at that point um and and we were able to yeah, I think just exist in like a, a casual curiosity of um, the, the the human side of things. Although, at the end of the evening, and she might not be forthright about this, but Tell me. she asked me to kiss her. Oh. I don't think so. I don't remember that. You did. I it's did like you not. said, can you kiss me? No, That's you how said, you you're, you're going to kiss me or what? And I was like. I want to, but I can't. I mean, can't. that's pretty ballsy if I did. So, yeah, yeah I'll take that. Nice. Yeah, I did say that, guys. It was pretty rad. 100% said that. Okay, so fast forward then. Well, yeah, and then you, uh, uh, and then that was, say, the Wednesday. And then on the Thursday night, you were playing a gig at the Northcote Social Club. So, I went along with Jane again to that. And then I think I pieced out, well, I pieced out right at the end of your set because I had to go and pick up the old mate who I was seeing at the time. And that was your first time hearing him? Yeah. So, first did time that make seeing you feel session. a different type of way about him? I, you, like, you know, oh, cool. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I really enjoyed the show. I can't tell you how I felt then. I, I think I was just, I think I was just shitty that I had to go and pick up Alex mm-hmm. and I couldn't just like hang out. But anyway, like the show had just ended and I'd made eyes with Maddie and sort of said like, I'm peacing out. And he was like, okay, well, I'm sure Alan would want to say goodbye to you. Gave Alan a hug and then just bailed. And then you guys were off to Tokyo the next day, I think. Uh, I can't remember at what point in the, well, we flew into Melbourne. So our first sideshow of that trip was Melbourne. And then mm-hmm. we would have had Sydney and the blues fest, uh, following that. So no, I don't think you did. I think you were leaving the country the following day. I, I'm pretty sure you were like hmm. piecing out of there and going to Tokyo. I think you did it the other way around. R- regardless, it's life in the fast kind of mum is doesn't necessarily matter. Um, but yeah, soon thereafter we was gone. And and then uh, got home off that trip. This is like this is kind of the tail end of that bonkers like 2012 year. This is sort of like the the wrap, not the wrap up necessarily, but there was some space in between getting home from Japan and like the next thing that I had, which would have been summer for you guys, which would have been your summer touring schedule because you right. did Bonnaroo and stuff that year. Right. 
Right. And that, that was coming up, but we, you know, had a little bit of time off. I finally had like more than no money in my bank account and, uh, got home that relationship that I was in had like finally dissolved. You know, it was one of those tumultuous relationships that was on again, off again, on again, off again. Um, and it dissolved completely. And I thought, you know what I had, you've been to Australia. Mm -hmm. It's the best the best like the 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 food the the people i don't know if it's something about the commonwealth accent but like american just like australians when they come to our country we're just like infatuated i remember meeting australians growing up and just being infatuated with australians thinking they were just so cool um i think we have that same party pass over in australia and I thought, man, I want to, I want to go back to Oz. So I immediately booked a ticket. I convinced. No, 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 no. no. Step back. Yeah, dude. No. My B, my B. I've been told. (laughs) And I've got proof of this. I still have it. Show it. Three weeks after we met, I get an email from you. Right, that's what I'm saying. Right after yeah, Tokyo, were, you I got just home. You, you no, just you just said that you like you, you just you like skipped over Australia. that and you were just gonna like go back to Australia. Give yourself you a chance me, you to be sent, romantic for a second. You sent me an email three weeks after, so your relationship had ended. Mine ironically had two within that three or four week period. I get an email from you, which is, you know, hi, blah blah blah. How are you? What's going on? Chitty chat. Did oh, you read I'm, between the lines? There was literally a PS at the end of the email, no. which said, "PS, are you still seeing the photographer?" Oh God. no way! And I went, Straight yes, up, got, now tell me, do you really want to love I've me? I've got the email, ever? dude. I've I want to see that email because I don't. For, I'm it. not a PS kind of guy. You can give it to me, and I'll put it right smack dab. In You're this not video. a PS kind of guy. You absolutely were a PS. No, kind I'll of just guy put it right in the body of the work. Love makes you act weird, man. So, anyways, I. Oh, boo boo! Did you just make it to the end of the video? Yes, you did. Do you want to see more videos just like this one? Huh? Do you? Well, then head over to patreon.com slash live at the lodge where you can support the how goods of this podcast as well as the entire live at the lodge family. Yep. Yeah. You're going to get exclusive merch, personalized shout out videos. Me and Jules, we're going to show up at your house and baptize your nephew. Huh? Check it out. Patreon.com slash live at the lodge. <laughs>